Welcome to the Luxury Listing Specialist Podcast with Michael Lafito, where top luxury agents reveal their best practices, plus interviews with real estate industry influencers, thought leaders, and luxury marketing experts. You'll come away from each episode with new strategies and tactics to dominate high-end homes in any market. And now for the latest episode of Luxury Listing Specialist, here's your host, luxury real estate expert, coach, and trainer, Michael Lafito. Welcome back to another episode of the Luxury Listing Specialist podcast. I'm your host, Michael Lafito. You're in the right spot if you're an agent, you're a team leader, you're a broker owner, maybe you're a franchise owner, and you're looking to increase your average sale price. You're looking for co competitive advantages to bring more value to your marketplace, to your agents. You're looking to differentiate yourself. Again, our podcast is part of the industry syndicate where top podcasts in the industry all are under that industry syndicate uh, umbrella, if you will. I'm your host, Michael Lofito. As always, if you have any questions about this podcast, a, a past podcast, you know, maybe you want to recommend a topic for a future podcast, go ahead and shoot me an email, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com, michael at marketingluxurygroup. And don't forget to uh, check out our Facebook page. It's free. Go to facebook.com forward slash luxury listing specialist. Again, looking forward to bringing on today's guest. Um, before I introduce uh, my guest, uh, give you a little background on how Ramon and I met. Uh, again, I presented at uh, several Keller Williams events over the past few years, and Ramon and I met at Keller Williams Family Reunion, excuse me, at uh, Keller Williams Luxury Retreat. In 2019, I, I presented there, and uh, and so I have Ramon on uh, today's call. Ramon is an agent with Keller Williams, um, runs a successful team there, works with investors, commercial properties, but he also um, helped steer hold and launch Keller Williams Luxury Division. So Ramon, d d pronounce your last name, Ramon. I don't want to butcher it. Thank you very much, Mike. Um, my name is Ramon Davila. D-A-V-I-V-A. Ramon is a primarily Spanish speaking, but his English is awesome. Um, we just did a, a luxury certification training down at their family reunion, Mexico. There were roughly a thousand agents at the conference and we had about 50 uh, at the actual um, training. So Ramon, welcome. I appreciate your time. No, thank you very much, Mike. It's always a pleasure to talk to you and, and um, to to help other agents and and uh, our our uh, segment to to have better results in the future. Absolutely, you know you you want the same thing that I want for our audience. You want for your uh, you know industry and your agents uh, in Mexico, and that's to raise the bar, right? Give your agents the better tools and resources to help the consumers as well, and. So we're going to talk about five main bullet points, uh, five main things on today's uh, call. So I really haven't had much international guest on our podcast, so I feel like this is a great void for the listenership. And again, agents that are looking to break into or differentiate themselves in the luxury market, of course, uh, luxury is global now. Luxury is international. So that's where I believe uh, you being a guest is is, is perfect for, for today's show. So uh, first off, uh, again, you, you you help Keller Williams formally launch their luxury division. Again, Mexico doesn't have the streamlined multiple listing service. Data isn't is readily available for us. You know, in our in the states here, you can easily grab from a prospecting standpoint, from a farming standpoint. You can pull data on certain zip codes re real easy. It's a little bit more difficult. So one of the things that you and I talked about when we prepared for the uh, luxury listing specials uh, certification training for your agents at the family reunion in Mexico was, you know, hey, keep in mind it's more difficult to define luxury when you don't have data uh, easily accessible. So we came down, we did this training, it was awesome. If you recall, we had real time translators in the back of the training room that were had headphones on for those that didn't speak uh, English well. They were wearing headphones during my training, and that 
the translation was happening in real time, just like you see at the United Nations or these big government, you know, affairs where uh, multiple languages are being spoken and they're hearing the presenter in real time in their native language being translated. So that was a pretty cool experience and uh, you and your staff did an amazing job there. No, well, thank you very much, uh, Mike. Uh, yes, the, the idea is to um, have everybody down here uh, uh, reaching the, the same level of professionalism to um, uh, exclusivate uh, more properties, uh, luxury mm -hmm. properties, which is the new segment that uh, we are trying to to be very, very uh, uh, picky on, on how to handle this this area in Mexico, and uh, and and also uh, trying to have uh, this referral network in in many cities in Mexico, which which receive a lot of of, of um, clients from the USA and Canada. Mm -hmm. um, also for a beautiful weather, uh, we have a very, very special places like Cabo or Puerto Vallarta, uh, all the Cancun and Riviera Maya area, and even uh, small places like San Miguel Allende, which is in the central part of Mexico, or Chapala in, in near Guadalajara. So. Uh, there are um, very big uh, U.S. Uh, communities living there, and, and we are trying to, to uh, promote these areas uh, better with this uh, luxury brand. You know, you bring up a good point. So part of the reason that you brought us down and you wanted to certify, you know, 50 of you know, your best agents is you wanted to have the confidence that if somebody had a referral to uh, agents, or they brought in a referral to you for, for you know helping run the luxury brand there that you could be confident that if you had a referral in Cabo or Puerto Vallarta that these agents um, had uh, had the knowledge had the tools had the resources to give that potential client the experience but also you know have the tools readily available uh, that top agents have you know globally so you you wanted to make sure that uh the experience for the referral like if you know the, if somebody's referring you from colorado or new york or dallas and and you're referring them to that that agent that they have you know the tools to be successful exactly yeah. exactly and and that's why it was so great to meet you at boca raton in in that uh uh luxury retreat and that's why yep. we want to contact you to come down to Mexico to meet everybody and to give us this certification in, in Mexico also. Yeah, I mean, it's like the prerequisite, right? So you have the confidence that these agents, you know, have the tools and the resources, the platform and the referral network to, you know, raise the bar for, for the agents, for the sellers, for the buyers, and for the referring agent. Exactly. Exactly. So talk to me a little bit about overall, uh, again, Mexico is a large country, but talk to me a little bit of overall about, you know, how the real estate market is uh, so far in 2020. Um, of course, the whole Corona thing is putting a pause on a lot of markets, but speak in generalities, if you will. Uh, is it, you know, is it a buyer's market overall? Is it a seller's market overall? Uh, what was it last year? Is it, is, what's it trending? Talk to me a little bit about uh, the, 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 the economy and the real estate market and uh, what's influencing that? Okay, uh, yes, well, uh, Mexico is a 120 million uh, population country. It's a third of what the U.S. is in, uh, about. And, um, and uh, right now we are the 15 uh, economy in the world. We produce $1.15 trillion in GDP. But in 30 years, we will be the eighth economy in the world, and, and we will triple that GDP or more. So um, we are an emerging market, and that uh, is because we have a very young uh, average uh, age population, and 45, uh, more than 50% of the population is 30 years old or, or, or younger and 75% uh, 40 years old or younger. So, so we are a young country that we are uh, growing. A lot of these young people are, are, are going to be uh, 
uh, entering into the consumption market, which is from 25 to 55 years old. And, and this will create a lot of, 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 of market for many products, including uh, uh, real estate. And um, the, 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 um, uh, it, it's been rough since the last year because we have a new president in Mexico uh, that uh, has not been sending very good signals to the, to the investors uh, globally. So uh, many of those have, uh, uh, and, and because of the global economy also, many of the, of the wealthy uh, uh, segment is, is um, keeping their dollars uh, in the US. Uh, last year, you had an awesome uh, return on investment in the Dow Jones, and, 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 and that uh, also um, didn't help us sell the, 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 the quantity of properties that, that we were expecting. So, so we are definitely in a buyer's market. And, okay. uh, and, and, the, and, the, and the thing is that because we have also by now had a 20% devaluation of the peso uh, against the dollar, this, this is a great opportunity for, for U.S. Uh, uh, investors to, to buy a, a good uh, house or, 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 or a vacation rental in Mexico, which has uh, three very important uh, um, advantages. The first is that in Mexico, we have a, a very good add value uh, in, in a property. Right. Um, in, in where I live, for example, we have, we have had a 14% added value each year from, from the last 20 years, constantly. So, so that's a, a huge advantage uh, uh, for properties in Mexico. And the other thing is that because you can rent these properties uh, as vacation rentals, we have had 5%, 6% return on investment every year uh, in, in very good properties. So, so this is something that has been very appealing for some of the investors from the U.S., in Canada, in, into Mexico. Plus, we have a beautiful weather. We have this delicious food, uh, yes. very cheap oh. services, affordable doctors, and, and a very very low property tax. So that has been very appealing for some investors to to buy a good property in Mexico. And 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 that's about uh, how the the economy is working right now. Well, that was a, that was a very good overview. Thank you. And you know, for those listeners. You know, it's really important that you understand foreign buyers as well. I mean, uh, the U.S. had the fifth, uh, Mexico had uh, $2.3 billion of purchases um, from foreign buyers. So there's some amazing data out there. According to the profile of international transactions in, in the U.S. 2019, the top five foreign buyers, Ramon, number one was China. China, $13.4 billion. Then Canada, uh, again, these are uh, international buyers buying in the United States. So Ch China was number one, then Canada, then India, then the United Kingdom, and then Mexico was fifth. So again, part of me having you on the show today isn't just to ha help agents in the States that have luxury listings and how do I establish relationships with agents in Mexico and some of these areas, but also, hey, there are tons of Mexican uh, m money coming into the states, right? 2.3 billion, and the top five destinations are, you know, Florida was number one, then California, Texas, Arizona, and New Jersey, and so that's really important for you as an agent. You need to know the data. You need to know migration pa patterns or feeder markets, and so Ramon, this was very good, giving us a little overall um, market overall overview, if you will, on Mexico. So. What recommendations would you have? You know, I just talked about, um, you know, having good, uh, you know, relationships with agents and building your database of potential, uh, you know, referring agents in Mexico. What recommendations would you have? You know, I'm, a, I'm an agent in Colorado, in New York, in Dallas. I have this amazing luxury property, and I want to get more eyeball, international eyeball traffic on. Is there anything that comes to mind? Is, is it more just relationships? Is there anything from a language barrier? Um, anything that you'd recommend um, to get in front of, um, you know, either potential buyers or uh, influential real estate brokerages or agents in Mexico, if I represent a seller here in the States? 
Yes, well, of course. Um, uh, one of the, of, of the uh, peculiarities of, of this segment is that many of, of the clients of the luxury market are, are, are wealthy people, and, and, and it's people that it's used to move uh, his money uh, between countries. And, and they are always looking for, for good opportunities overseas. Uh, mostly now that uh, because of the last year we had this new uh, left uh, president uh, taking over, uh, many of the wealthy people in Mexico are, are nervous and, and, and they are trying to have a foot outside Mexico just in case. Uh, mm. I, I think it will mm. never become a Venezuela because precisely being the neighbor of the U.S. and the U.S. US will, would never allow it. But... Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, but but I think that uh, many people in Mexico or, or in this segment is trying to buy property in Miami or in Houston or in in, in California and many many places in the U.S. and 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 this is why it's very important to have this partnership between agents uh, in the U.S. and Mexico because it is the only way for us to 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 refer uh, this this kind of of um, clients. Uh, so, so, so we can land sales in in other places. Plus, uh, yeah. yes. go ahead. No, no, no. That, plus, I was uh, going to tell you that uh, also the the, the the new millennials that are inheriting a lot of money from from the wealthy in Mexico also are, are trying to 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 buy a condo in Miami and, and in California and in New York because they like to travel. And, and, and right now, it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it makes sense for them to have different, uh, smaller properties everywhere than having a, a really big one. So, so um, this is how we see the trends in Mexico walls. Hey there, it's Michael Lafito. Thanks again for listening to our podcast. If you are interested in signing up for our luxury listing specialist certification, or if you want additional information on how you can dominate selling higher end homes in your marketplace, Make sure you go to luxurylistingspecials.com. You, you brought up two things I want to bring up. So first off, your last trend that you brought up, we're seeing the same thing in the state. So instead of the old McMansions, we're seeing the younger buyers that want to have a really nice home but have you know a secondary house, a vacation property, or they want to travel. They don't want to be tied to this big monster home. So we are seeing the same thing in the state. So thanks for sharing that uh, with, with us. But you also brought up how, you know, uh, the wealthy in Mexico, they want to have maybe their their footprint, if you will, their portfolio in, outside of Mexico, just, because, just in case the economy doesn't do well or socialism is prevalent or something along those lines. So again, top five foreign buyers, Mexico being fifth in the 2019 NAR international, um, you know, residential real estate uh uh, data that they provide us. So that's that that might explain a little bit. Um, so having the relationships, having the uh, presence, maybe having, uh, a, you know, Ramon, your English is very good. And I did my training with just a little un poquito Spanish, right? So it's really important maybe to have team members on your team that are fluent in Spanish. So if you do have um, potential clients or referring source, that language barrier um, is uh, not going to be an issue. Exactly. Exactly. That, that, that would be recommended. Uh, many of, of, of these clients speak English, but it's always important to, to, to have someone that can help uh, with, with uh, details, uh, contracts. Uh, and th these all are, are very important issues to consider when, when we are um, uh, trying to to land a, a good sale of, of a luxury property. Yeah, and be understanding each other's markets, understanding the uh, hesitancies or the, the pitfalls or the uh, misconceptions is really important as well, right? So they bring more value. You know, you want to attract opportunities. You want to be the expert and being, uh, understanding the Mexico economy, understanding the uh, the elephants in the room, uh, so to speak, or, or the, the things that might uh, be worrisome to the potential client is really important, which brings me to my next point. Um, you know, if, if somebody was um, looking to purchase in, in Mexico, in other words, um, an agent here in the States, they have a client they want to refer, you, you know, you have a lot of open listings there, right? You don't have a lot of exclusive listings. Is that correct? 
Yes, we, exactly. That's why we, we wanted your training, because the most important here that we want to, to, to take over is, is to, to, to have exclusives as, more, as much as possible. If not, it's, 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 it's very hard for us to invest in a, in a marketing campaign if, if everybody has the same property. So one of the things that we have been uh, very successful in our agency in Mexico is, is, is really convincing all these uh, luxury uh, owners that uh, that they need to give us the exclusivity and and now we can make these international campaigns and 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 put it out there so whether anybody in the US or Canada can send us uh, referrals mm -hmm. yeah so open listings here in the states aren't real common but for those of you that don't know what an open listing is it's basically hey a seller at 123 elm street isn't committed to you or your brokerage but they have several agents say hey bring me a buyer and i'll pay you a commission basically versus hey no matter if you bring me the buyer or not you're going to get a paid a commission if you know that the seller is loyal to you as an agent you're going to invest more time energy and marketing dollars to get that home sold but with open listings you know you're not going to because there's no guarantee you're going to get paid exactly um, so open listings are more common there um, and and there's not one per se network right so if you list a, a property or development you don't have a multiple listing service there and is that correct Yes, only in a, in a few um, in a few markets uh, that that very US uh, um, oriented, they have the yes. MLS. In, in Cabo, in Vallarta, and in San Miguel are the only markets I know they have an MLS. Uh, every, everyone else has to fend for themselves about uh, the information on the market, and, and it, it's tough. Um, and, and that's because of a lack of uh, uh, regulations from the government in Mexico. Um, it, it, you don't need a license in Mexico to, to become a real estate agent yet. We are working on that, and that that is a, a part of the problem. Yeah, so that is part of the problem. Uh, very interesting. Yeah, we're very regulated here in the states, although certain markets uh, people are a little bit less ethical than other markets. Uh, when we were doing um, the, the morning of our training, uh, it, it was it was awesome. So it was in Mazatlan. Uh, it was it was eye-opening for me. My wife reminded me, I guess we had been, I had been to Mexico one other time, but it was on a cruise ship. We stopped in Cozumel, like, a, you know, an hour or two stop. But Ramon, this was, you know, a true experience. It was great. The people were amazing. And um, again, I don't speak fluent Spanish and I got along just fine. And, and like I said, it was a great experience. But the morning of our training, uh, you and I, uh, I saw you on the beach and we walked along the beach and we were talking and you, you shared some things that were eye opening for me. So if you're a, an agent in Mexico and you represent a high profile client and maybe you have a high, you know, a luxury listing, a luxury property. You know, I'm all about, you know, here in the States, giving agents the tools and resources to be successful. Sometimes that might be what we talk about in the pocket listing or the private network and maybe not putting it out there because of confidentiality. Uh, but that's that's more of a rarity because in most markets in the States, that, that top 5%, top 10% of, of priced properties, it's, it's a slower market. It's what we call a buyer's market. So you need more exposure to the right audience, to the right list. But you shared with me on our walk, you know, that, that morning that, you know, these high profile clients or these high profile properties, they don't want signs. They don't want a lot of pictures or if anything, they don't want videos. Talk, talk to me a little bit about why that is. Uh, well, first of all, um, of course, because of the situation in, in Mexico um, uh, and, and because it starts even because of these open uh, listings, uh, they don't want all the real estate agents to, to knock on their door and, and ask uh, for the property also to be promoted by, by them. So, so that, that's the first thing. Of, of course, uh, it, because they being a very high profile client, they want to be to, to, to do this as confidential as possible. They don't want their name to be out there uh, for neighbors to know that they are selling or, or for, 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 uh, 
for everybody to to know that they, they are trying to move or, or they're, they're trying to sell. So so this is something that, that, that the first thing that we do when we get to, to a client like this is to sign a confidentiality agreement about uh, keeping safe all the information that they will be sending us uh, or, or sharing with us. So so um, this is essential. And, and, and thanks to, to the Internet and to all these uh, new digital marketing that we can do, we can really be, uh, we, we, we have to try to be as a sniper in trying to get the right clients instead of trying to, to do a shotgun in, in terms of, 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 of uh, advertising. And, and, and the other thing very, very important is, is, is that's why we don't use signs in many of the, of the uh, properties. Um, and, and, and we are trying to do very special things. And, and this network, this, this uh, referral network that, that we can establish is much better to, to try to, to, to get into this line of business, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the confidentiality, that's interesting. So Ramon, you representing a seller, you'll sign a confidentiality um, before taking on the listing so that they feel comfortable because you're sharing with me that many of your high net worth individuals, uh, clients down there are skeptical by nature. They're worried they wanna keep a low profile for maybe safety, security. Uh, uh, they don't wanna draw attention to themselves or the properties. Uh, is that correct? Exactly, exactly. So, so understanding that, if you were working with a buyer, understanding that, you know, trying to bring value to that relationship, um, if I was representing a buyer and I would let them know, hey, we have a lot of exclusive listings that perhaps aren't on the computers um, and because a lot of our clients want to keep a low profile, but, you know, that that's a value add, right? Because buyers... You know, they're always looking for why should I work with you, Ramon, to help, help me buy a home when I can find stuff over the Internet? Well, that's a lot more difficult in Mexico. But even in the States, that's a good reminder to you as an agent is to build relationships uh, because you want to bring more value to the table. The most listened to radio station your potential buyer cares listens to and cares about is what's in it for them. So if they know that you have relationships and you have upcoming listings and properties that aren't even on the computers, you're bringing more value to the table than the other agent that just throws you on their automatic search and sends you the recycled listings that all the other agents are. Exactly. Plus, because of this confidentiality agreement and, and, and the way we market th these properties, um, you will never see, the, see, them, see them in the, in the market. So the only way is, is to call us and, and, and saying, OK, I have a, a good client with a good profile and, and he wants a property with these characteristics so we can go into our listings, which most of those are, are exclusives. But but the, the, the condition on the exclusivity is is precisely this uh, this confidentiality and and taking care of, of of the information of the client. So if you don't have an exclusive and it's an open listing, um, your reputation uh, uh, precedes itself. Correct. So in other words, if if you have an if you're an agent and you're contacting the seller in an open listing, or maybe you have a relationship, but it's it's an open listing, how they're in, how how are they putting their trust in you that you're going to do your due diligence to make sure this is not a tire kicker this is a qualified buyer um so what talk to me about that what are some of the things that you're doing so if i contacted you ramon and whether it be an exclusive listing or an open listing what are some of the things you're going to ask me to provide you so that you know that i have a qualified client well, first of all, is is why are you interested in in this property? Uh, where are you coming from? Um, uh, what is the budget you're you're uh, looking for? And how would you pay for this for this uh, property if if it uh, suits you? When and and uh, where do you work? Uh, how many years do you have in that work? And and we all, we also try to search. Uh, about you in in your in your um, uh, company plus in, in in all social media so so we know that 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 you are a, a qualified customer for for one of, of for the luxury properties that we have in mm -hmm. our listing. well that's that's really good well listen i'm telling you it was such a it was such an honor to uh, teach our 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 class uh to your top 
Keller Williams agents in Mexico. And, um, you know, we, Lux is the name of our, our, our abbreviated at luxury listing specials or Lux. And in Spanish, we were saying Lujo a lot, right? And we had a good time. And uh, you and Juan Carlos and, and your group and your staff did an amazing job. And uh, I'm really looking forward to, to continuing it. So uh, you guys are doing some really great things down there. It was an honor. You're very knowledgeable on the market. Um, you bring a lot of value to the table, which helps with trust in times of uncertainty. And these are all good reminders to our listeners, right? Being knowledgeable, which helps in times of uncertainty, which, you know, these are uncertain times in 2020. We've gone through some unprecedented, you know, events here. So having a good online presence, being likable, being trustworthy, understanding not just where the market is, but where it's going, but also having global and international connections is really uh, important. So. Um, now, Ramon, if anybody has uh, any questions or or they might have a referral in Mexico or maybe they have an investor looking to, to purchase in, in, in Mexico, what's the best way for somebody to get in touch with you? Well, um, uh, they can always um, go into our website, which is and um, or call me directly um, to to. All right. to to, to my phone number. I don't know if you wanted to. I'm gonna, to yeah, I'm going to provide. So your website is inmobilux.com, and that's I-N-M-O-B-I-L-U-X.com. So again, I-N, N is in Nancy. So I-N is in Nancy, M is in Mary, O-B-I-L-U-X.com. And Ramon, your email is uh, just Ramon, and then D for your last name. So Ramon, R A M. O N D at I N M O B I L U X dot com and mobile lux dot com. So we'll make this available as well um, on the actual written portion of the podcast, your contact information. Um, this has been very valuable. Again, according to the profile of international transactions in US, the top five foreign buyers. Fifth was from Mexico, China, number one, Canada, India, United Kingdom, and Mexico. A lot of Mexican money moving into the States, but it's also a great time to purchase down there with some investment. The property taxes down there are dirt cheap, are they not? Yes, yes. It's 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 awesome. Plus, yeah. uh, there are many advantages. And right now, because of the 20% evaluation of the peso, you, it, this means your dollars can buy great properties with less money. So this is something that uh, you, you, you will want to look into in the future. That's great. Well, tons of information. Really appreciate it. Again, if any of you have any questions about this podcast or another, uh, shoot me an email, michael at marketingluxurygroup.com, michael at marketingluxurygroup. Again, keep raising the bar in real estate for more information. Oh, by the way, we got our book and our training manual translated to Spanish just for your course. So I wanted to make sure we told people about that. So again, if you are listening internationally and you're looking at bringing uh, an outside presenter in and you're looking to raise the bar and get your agent certified, please reach out to us. Again, my name is Michael Ofito. I'm the host of the Luxury Listing Specialist podcast and the founder of the Luxury Listing Specialist designation and book. Check it out, luxurylistingspecialist.com. Keep raising the bar in real estate, continue to make people's day and prove others wrong. My name is Michael Ofito. Have a great rest of your day.